Welcome out to another one of our Athlete of the Week interviews. This one's, uh, we've been waiting for this one for a little while because the record, we knew it's been getting close to being knocked off, but Lila Spring joining us, third time that you've been Athlete of the Week. And, and the reason we got it for you, A, a fantastic week, averaged another double-double over the weekend, nearly got that triple-double with blocks in two different games because you were a beast on the block. But the biggest thing, setting the career record for rebounds, Lila, you've had that in your sights. I think after setting the career record for blocks, you were like, okay, that's that's taken care of. Rebounds is number two on yeah. the list. What did it feel like to be able to, to kind of cap that one off? Um, well, obviously I got kind of close Friday night. So then I was like, okay, just seven rebounds is all I need for Saturday's game. And then, it, honestly, I completely forgot about it and I just was like, <laughs> just get the boards, just get the boards. So, yeah, that's what I did. But no, it's, it's really good, like a really good feeling to be able to break that record, like leave a little bit of a mark behind, so it's good. Well, when you talk about that record too, something special that comes with it is the fact that this year, people know who you are. So has it been, what's it been like trying to go and get rebounds this year, knowing that you're always going to have a body in front of you, that, that there's always, you, you're not going to be that sneaky person that gets to come yeah. in and get, oh, she's got five, now we got to pay attention to her. It's from minute one, people are paying attention to you. Yeah, it's, it's hard, but I love the challenge, honestly. It makes it so much more fun because obviously nothing's going to be given to me easy anymore. Like, I have to fight for my position and I have to, fight against like these big girls and like sometimes a double team triple team so and like it, it honestly it's it's fun i love the challenge one of the other things that co that's come with that challenge is i think you've also had to take a step back in your role in some ways because you're more not all the time obviously at the beginning of games getting things going you're, you're one of the big focal points but as the game goes along you turn into a bit more of a decoy for the team where you are drawing that person away and it's open shots up for other people how much has that been something you've taken some pride in that that you are why other players are getting open um, I love it, honestly. <laughs> I think it's so much fun. I love seeing like my teammates succeed, and I love getting them involved in the game because once everyone's involved in the game, like everyone's on a high, everyone's having so much fun. So like, yeah, when, especially like when I like can feed my my cutters as well. I love it. I think it's the best because it gets me assists and it gets everyone like yeah involved in the game. Well, talking about the assist game, you and Blanche, the two of you have been trading off whenever it's athlete of the week right now. But it's kind of like thunder and lightning. You're kind of the the, the thunder on the inside and she's kind of that speed that gets mm -hmm. to attack inside. That two person game really is what this team is starting to become known for this year. Yeah, it's good. We we definitely work really well together. Um, she always finds me, um, whether it's like lobbing the ball up to me, or she drives, um, brings my defender across and dishes, or like even when I have it down low and she just cuts and we get that quick little dish to her. So yeah, we work really well together. Not only just her, but it feels like the other posts are starting to get more comfortable too. Marcelo's getting more comfortable coming back from the injury. Tamara's getting a little bit more kind of the, the, the speed of the game is starting to mm -hmm. catch up or she's catching up to the speed of the game a little bit more. When you start seeing how this team has started to come together and how the freshmen are starting to, to adapt to the college game, where's the potential for this team at right now? Honestly, our potential is crazy to me. I think we could genuinely like go the, all the way. I think once we once we started clicking together, we're we're so hard to beat. Like we can score on all levels of the floor, and we work really well together. And like yeah, we find each other really well. So I think it's really exciting. This last road trip you were on Central Wyoming and Northwest. That's the toughest road trip of the year. I don't care how good Central is. I don't care how bad Central is. I don't care how good bad Northwest is. Mm -hmm. You talk about having to go four hours and then go another three hours to try and get to Powell. What? How much pride did you take, especially when this was a road trip that you guys struggled a little bit on last year? Yeah. Um, no, it was a lot of pride. Obviously, like. The four-hour bus trips are hard because everyone falls asleep on the bus. <laughs> and then it takes a while for everyone to wake back up again. So I think, like, yeah, it's just, like, a big, yeah, a big pride thing. Like you said, like, we go on the road and we just knew what we had to do last weekend. We knew, that, like, those teams weren't going to go away. And they did make a run back on us. So I think we handled ourselves really well, especially, like, yeah, because we were, we were on the road and they had their crowds, you know, yelling at us and... 
everything, so it just makes it that little bit more fun. That's something this team has really gotten better at, too, is handling that run. And and while the run cut it close in both games there to, to them being able to take that lead, that's something that earlier on in the season, this team, they would have gotten the lead in some of the early games. It, it, what's changed as far as you guys being able to handle that pressure of that run and, and have confidence that you'll have the comeback? Um, I think we just have shortened our scoring droughts honestly like because we would go a few like a few times like earlier in the season we would go long periods of time without scoring at all so but I think the way we handle that run is we just stick together and then we know that we can score on offense so we just got to find a way to get stops honestly and then the few stops we like to get the stops we get just push the ball back back at them and get a bucket and just keep our run going too we got to give a shout out to your former teammate and current teammate from Australia, Tyra. When she hit those threes, mm -hmm. I know I was shouting at my TV in a good way when she hit those two against Northwest that kind of were the daggers to, to get you guys back and, and end that run. How proud are you? <laughs> what, what was going through your mind when you see her? She hasn't taken a shot basically yeah. all game, and then she hits two of the biggest shots I in the world. I was so proud of her. Like Tyra's my, my girl. We grew up together, so I know what she's capable of, but, you know, just I think it's just – being in rhythm and then just like having the confidence to shoot the ball. And every game, I'm always like, Tyra, shoot the ball, shoot the ball. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, just shoot it. Like, I don't care. Like, we have rebounders. Just shoot the ball. Like, get into your rhythm and we'll be there. Like, and we'll back your shot 100%. And I'm so glad she took those shots because we obviously needed them. And she's very capable of making them. So. Well, it's not just her. I mean, you talk about all the guards. You, as posts, want your guards shooting the ball, whether it's Kelly, whether it's Maddie, whether it's Tyra, whether it's Alba, whether it's Jessica. Every one of them, you know in practice, can hit yeah. those threes. And, and how much has their, as freshmen, for a lot of them, confidence grown? Or, or even just players that didn't get a lot of court time last year. Have you seen their confidence grow as well this year? Yeah, 100%. I think... And a big thing for about it is like we back them like and especially like as, as a sophomore I know myself I always tell them it's like you'll find everyone misses shots like everyone like I miss layups like <laughs> <laughs> like it happens but like you won't make it until you start to get into your rhythm and then the more you shoot the more confident you get and then people will be like oh she's a shooter and then you can drive so just just playing honestly but no I think it's a big confidence thing and the girls have really improved on that these two games coming up are probably the biggest of this five game road trip that you're on first before we talk about these two games this road trip mm -hmm. or this stretch of road games this is probably one of the toughest stretches that you guys have gone through all year as far as just being out on the road not getting back home what's that done for the team though uh, I think it's made us really resilient honestly I think because we have been on the road so much like especially in the start of the season and now like being on this big stretch it just like makes us like I don't know like we just don't care anymore we're just like we're gonna come in and play wherever we are like we're here to play basketball and we're gonna do that no matter where we are like who you are like who we're versing don't care we're gonna play you guys have two more Western Wyoming and Casper and probably the biggest two of yeah. the road trip Western Wyoming's leading the region right now Casper sitting right there behind them and, and really the top dogs I and mean, you got to knock off the top dog in order yeah. to become it so what are your expectations this week especially being that these are the two road games that you have with these two they're going to be hard. I, like, that's a given. Like, they're, they're the two tough teams. And Casper's always tough. Casper's, like, they've got a good coach, so they, he scouts well. Like, they're going to – it's going to be a tough physical game. But that just makes me more excited because I don't want to just win an easy game. I want to, like, work for it. So, like, I think <laughs> – like, I think – I know I'm excited. I'm pretty sure, like, most of the girls are excited. Like, and, you know, you always want to knock off the top team. So, yeah, I'm – I'm excited. Well, teams two and two, we'll, we'll wrap it up with one more question. Though. It's kind of off the court stuff, but we got to start asking it because you're not the you're not the hidden secret anymore around, and you're starting to get looks from schools, and, and you're starting to possibly start thinking about where's next. But when you start seeing D1 schools start to show interest in you, where's the next step? Have you given thought to the next step at all yet, or are you just kind of stay focused on the year? Um, I've given a little bit of thought to it, but – Honestly, I just want to finish this year, like, with the team and, like, enjoy my last year here at L Trip. And then when the season finishes, I'll look more into it all. And then 
I'll decide where I'm going. But as of right now, I'm talking to a few schools, but haven't decided anything yet. Well, she's definitely going to get a lot more looks. She is Lila Spring, our Athlete of the Week, currently sitting at second in blocks in the country, 15th in rebounding in the country, and looking to see those numbers continuing to improve. Lila, congratulations on another Athlete of the Week. I'm sure we'll have probably another one coming up in, in some point in time in the next six weeks. But we'll talk with you again then. But until now, good luck on this weekend's games. Thanks.